Hey there, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to use our Raycast to make a smarter enemy turret. An enemy turret that can detect when a player is behind an obstruction and use that to not fire at it. But when the player is outside of the obstruction, relative to the turret's line of sight, it will fire. So, let's jump right in here. Alright, so let's look at the turret here. We have a static body 2D with a sprite and a collision shape and then we have a hitbox. So what we're going to do is kind of mimic what we did for the player. We're going to make a new node. We're going to call it pointer. We're going to make sure it's above the sprite in the scene tree. And then we're going to also add a child of a sprite so that we can see where the arrow is pointing and a raycast 2D. Let's do that now. Here we are with our turret. We have our pointer, a sprite, and a raycast. Just like before, I'm going to go to the sprite, assets, and fill in that arrow and then make sure that I go to the transform property and I'll have to set this by 64 on X. Then I'm going to go to my raycast. I want to make sure this is enabled and I'm going to cast to 800 on X and 0 on Y. Make sure that this is able to collide with areas because the player's hurt box is an area. And then for the collision mask, I'm going to have this against the player, the environment, and the targets, but not the turret. Now the next thing we want to do is I want just slowly rotating turret. So what I'd like to do is just change the rotation degrees of this arrow by a set amount every second. So let's go to our turret and let's make a new script and let's start working on that. First, since it's the pointer that I want to change, let's make an on ready reference to that. Let's also make a reference to the raycast while we're at it. Now, we need a variable that is telling us how fast we want the turret to rotate, and let's make it an export so that it's editable in the inspector. Now, to make it rotate, in the process function here, we're going to change the rotation degrees by our speed times delta every frame. That's going to make the speed frame rate independent, so it's always going to move the same speed on every frame device. And the reason why is because the time between frames can vary from device to device. Quick side note here, what exactly is delta? Delta is Greek for change, and what it means is the amount of time that has passed between the current frame that the game is processing and the previous frame that the game is processing. On a high-end device, your game could be processing at literally thousands of frames per second, which would make delta relatively small. On a low-end device, your game could be processing at only 30 frames per second, which would make delta relatively large. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking the speed that we would like it to rotate in one minute and multiplying it by a fraction, or not in one minute, sorry, one second, and multiplying it by a fraction of a second. And that fraction of a second is how much time has passed between now and the previous frame. By doing this, a high-end device that runs with many, many frames per second isn't going to appear to run any faster than a low-end device that processes relatively few frames per second. If anybody remembers from back in the 1990s, European TVs and American TVs ran at two different speeds. So if you were an American and you were importing European games, your games would run at an almost insane rate because it was uh, adjusting to the different frame rate between Europe and America. End of side note. Okay, so all we're going to do with our process delta is access the rotation degrees parameter of our pointer and then add to that plus equals the speed times delta which is whatever our rotation speed is times however much time has gone by since the last frame. Okay so there we go let's test this out and make sure it's going to rotate the way we want it to. We've got our turret rotating it's a little fast for my taste but it's going to be fine for what we need to do. Now the logic of what we need to do next is check when this raycast collides with things make sure that it's colliding with the player and if it is we're going to generate a turret shot and fire it towards the player so the main thing is we want to check to see what it's colliding with and check to see if that object is in the right kind of group let's do that now before we do anything else with the turret let's take a look at the player in the player we can set the player to be on a specific group meaning that when we're checking for a raycast we can check to see if the collider that has intercepted the ray is part of a group and if it is we can do something special if it's not we can skip that so in this case we have a player here and 
if you go to the node tab you'll see that there's signals but there's also groups what I want to focus on is the hurt box of the player so if I go to the hurt box I want to make sure that I go over to node check for groups and then I want to make sure that I've added the player to the uh, player layer or to the player group rather and to do that you would just type this in here and press add it's important that you keep track of the exact way that you wrote this for example for me I wrote it uppercase P player that's going to come in handy relatively soon if I were to write it as lowercase p player and I try to check it for uppercase p player I could have an issue between those two different cases so make sure that you're paying very close attention to the case that you're using when you're making these groups we have a folder for a turret shot scene we can open this up and let's take a look at what's in here we have an area 2d node child of a sprite we have a collision shape for the area 2d and then we have a visibility notifier. The visibility notifier is something I haven't talked about before, but it does exactly what it sounds like it should. If the object is visible, you can uh, hook up signals to have things happen with the script. And if the object becomes invisible, you can do the same. In this case, we're going to be using the uh, no longer visible signal to have the shot be destroyed so that it's not taking up memory if it's off screen. First thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight the turret shot and then let's create a new script for it. So first up is our speed. I've made this an export so it's easy to set the inspector and I've defaulted it to 500 which is the same speed as the player. Feel free to adjust this up or down. Next up is our movement direction. I've defaulted this to vector 2.0. This is a temporary variable that's going to store in which direction the shot is going to be moving. In the process function, we're going to be taking the position of the shot and adding to it the plus equals the movement direction normalized times its speed times delta. And again, the delta is being included to make sure that this moves the same speed no matter what uh, frame rate the device that it's running on has. And last but not least, we have a function that's going to allow us to set up our movement direction to any set vector outside so that when the turret creates the shot the turret can immediately set the movement direction based on where the player is in relation to the turret so that the shot can immediately start moving towards the turret so the setup function is going to take a point direction meaning in which direction the turret is pointing of type vector 2 it returns nothing hence the void and we're just going to change the movement direction to be equal to that point direction now we need to be able to create this shot from the turret itself so let's go back to the turret script okay so back in our turret here we're going to first make a reference to our turret shot and again we're going to use the export and make it a type pack scene so that we can easily set it in the inspector then once that's done we're going to create a function here to shoot it all right so our shoot function here is going to check to see if the ray is colliding and if it is, and the collider is in the player group, then we're going to create an instance of the turret shot. We're going to add it as a child of the turret. In this case, that's not a problem because the turret is static, so it's not moving. We're then going to set the global position of the shot to be the same as the turret's global position. It's important that you use global position here. And then we're going to set the rotation degrees to be equal to the rotation degrees of the pointer plus 90. The reason we have to add that 90 is because when I made the turret shot I made it up and down instead of left and right which means that it's always going to be 90 degrees off of true for whatever Godot creates. Then we're going to call the setup function and we're going to pass in the collision point which is where the player is minus the position of the turret which is going to give it a relative direction in which to move. Now we're going to be shooting every frame so I'm going to add this to my process function this is going to cause a few issues here, but we'll deal with them in just a moment. So let's go out of distraction free mode here. Let's find our turret. And let's make sure that we have our turret shot assigned. Now, let's try this out. Okay, so moving up, you can see immediately that our turret is seeing the player if they're not behind the barricade. But if our player is behind the barricade, it's not seeing. And the reason why is because of that ray cast. Now what you'll notice, it's kind of neat there, that might actually be a function you want, is you might want a ton of shots at once, or you might not. So let's talk about how we can 
put in a shot delay there so that it's not firing a bunch at once. All right, so back at our turret here, a shot delay is really simple. All we have to do is add a timer node, and I'm going to call it shot timer. I'm going to set its wait time to be relatively small, and this is going to be not a one shot and not an auto start. Now I'm going to, with that done, I'm going to connect the timeout signal to the turret. Now essentially all I really need to do is create a small boolean value to tell the turret whether or not it can shoot. So up here at top I'm going to create a new boolean value that I'm going to call can shoot. And I also decided to default that value to true. Now, when we call our shoot function, we want to check not just that the ray is colliding, but if we can shoot. Then, when we actually shoot, we're going to set can shoot to be false. And start the timer. Now, to start the timer, we're going to make an on ready reference to it. With that on ready reference, we can then, after we set can shoot to be false, turn the shot timer on. Then, when the shot timer times out, we're going to set this to say can shoot equals true. And I think I set that to not be a one shot. We do want the timer to be a one shot. There we go. All right, so let's save everything. Let's try this out. We got our one shot. Now you can make this even shorter. It doesn't have to be a tenth of a second, especially since the uh, turret is moving so quickly. You could have it be significantly less, but that actually seems pretty good. So this is a display of a few different uses of the Raycast 2D node. First, we talked about using it for a hitscan weapon that is signified by a particle system, by whatever this intercepts. Then we talked about how to create not only a turret that uses the same uh, idea behind it without using a hitscan weapon, instead generating a projectile, but also how to use a barricade so that your player can have a little bit of line of sight. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the description down below. Uh, otherwise, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day.